Hi there. Now for this question then we were asked to find the maximum mass m that you could attach at b in order to keep the beam AB in equilibrium and horizontal. And as you can see it turns out to be 100 kilograms. And then in the second part you had to find out the tension in the rope C. And that turns out to be 1230 newtons to three significant figures. So as usual, what I'll do is I'll take you slowly through the working, although you might want to fast forward just to see the solution quickly. So the first thing I'd want to do is put on the forces acting on the beam. And you can see they're going to look something like this then. You've got the weight of the particle at B acting downwards is going to be mg newtons and the two tensions in the ropes ta and tc acting upwards and the weight of the beam 25 g newtons acting downwards at the center of that beam now we've got to work out then this maximum value for the mass m and what's going to happen is that if we were to increase this then this beam here is eventually going to start to tilt about this point C here. Once we put on a lot of mass, this beam would then start to turn about C. It would start to go up in this direction, okay? Turn clockwise about C. So what we've got to do is just catch it at the point where it's just about to turn about C tilt if you like about the point C and when this happens that tension at A will disappear this string comes becomes slack okay so there'll be no tension in that string A so that's the point about this question to realize that particular statement that for the maximum value of M that tension TA has to be zero so if I mark that in there, okay, that TA is going to be equal to zero. In order to get M, all I need to do now is just take moments about C. That will mean that the tension in that rope C doesn't enter the moments equation, and that will just give me an equation with the mass M in, okay? So what I need to do is take moments then about C. So if you take moments about C, put that in there, I need to set up a positive sense. And I always like to bring in a ruler at this stage. Think of a ruler putting your finger at the point C, as I've done many times before. And all we need to do is simulate the turning effect that these forces have about C. So if you were to think about the weight mg here that acts downwards so I could push at this end of the ruler downwards and the ruler would want to turn in a clockwise sense about C so I'm taking the clockwise sense as being positive okay we'll put that like so okay so when it comes to that moment of the force mg it's going to be mg multiplied by the distance back to C, which is 0 0.5 meters. Okay, so that's the moment of that force. And then we've got the weight. The weight acts downwards to the left of C. So if I was to push the rod or the ruler here downwards, you can see the ruler would want to turn in an anti-clockwise sense about C. So that's gonna be negative okay in the opposite sense to what we've got here and so that would be force which would be 25g newtons times the distance back to c which would be two meters this tension here ta well that's zero so that has no effect and tc that force passes through the point where we've got our finger on the ruler so that won't affect the turn okay it doesn't provide any turning effect so this is our resultant moment and it will equal zero because the beam is in equilibrium 
So it's just a question then of solving this. I noticed that I could divide through by g, it's in every term there, so I could cancel the g out. And just rearranging this for m, you find that m would equal 50 here, 25 times 2, that would be 50, and I would divide that by 0 0.5. Okay, and that gives me 100, 100 kilograms then for m. Now in the second part here, to find the tension in the rope C, then the best thing I could do is resolve vertically upwards. Okay, there'll be no resultant force acting upwards. So I've got the tension TC, okay, acts in the positive sense, and I've got these two forces acting downwards. Okay, so they'll be negative. The weight of the beam, minus 25G, We've now found out that M is 100, so you've got minus 100G, because that acts downwards. And that's going to be equal to zero, because there's no resultant force. So, rearrange this, and you end up with TC equaling 125G. If you take G as 9.8, you'll find that that comes out to 1,225 okay, newtons, or if you round this up to three significant figures, you get 1,230 newtons to three significant figures. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea on that question.